welcome to Sun City News. I'm your host, Norma Taylor. We're covering these stories for you this week. We bring you some important community association news. Free disaster training is available to Beaufort County residents starting in August. Blue Heron Village neighborhood dedicates time and effort to sea turtles. Those stories and more are coming up. Sun City News starts now. This is Sun City News with Norma Taylor and the Sun City News team covering our community and the Low Country. The Community Association has implemented a new after-hours communication procedure for unexpected amenity closures and major event cancellations that occur outside of normal business hours. The Facilities Department will email a distribution group which includes a resident advisory committee member. The RAC member will forward the notification to the neighborhood representatives. Each NR will be responsible for disseminating the information to their respective neighborhoods. The Hidden Cypress Spa, Lake House Indoor Pool, and Perrysburg Indoor Pool are currently closed for repairs and renovations. Please check the Projects in Progress page on suncityhiltonhead.org for updates. Candidate application packets for this year's community election are available to download from the election page of the community website. Completed packets may be dropped off at Palmetto Commons beginning August 1st. See E! News Weekly for more details. For more information about these events and other community activities, check your email inbox for E! News Weekly or log on to suncityhiltonhead.org. The Community Association has made it easier than ever to stay informed about the major capital projects happening in Sun City Hilton Head. The Projects in Progress webpage is now available on www.suncityhiltonhead.org under Membership Announcements. You can also navigate to this page and the Association at Work flyer by clicking the yellow image at the bottom of E! News Weekly. The Beaufort County Sheriff's Office announces the Community Emergency Response Team, CERT program, will provide training to Beaufort County residents to increase self-sufficiency in a disaster. Participants will learn skills that will enable them to provide emergency assistance to their families and neighbors. CERT classes are free of charge and will be held at the Technical College of the Low Country in August. The course is taught in four evening sessions, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., and one Saturday class from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Jasper County currently does not offer the CERT program. Jasper residents who reside in Sun City can also take the program on a space available basis. The Sheriff's Office must give Beaufort County residents priority. For more information about the course and to register, Contact Major David Zioli at 843-812-8035 or email cert at bcgov.net. A day at the beach with our neighbors in Blue Heron involved more than sunscreen and a beach chair. Reporter Georgia Lash got to hear what they discovered. I'm out here with Constance Ulrich from Blue Heron, and you're a member of the social committee. I am. But you have news for us about a unique event that you planned for your neighborhood, Blue Heron. Yep. Uh, tell us about that, please. Okay, we decided to do an outside event. We went on a beach discovery tour at Fish Hall Beach, and it was done by the Coastal Discovery Museum. They had um, naturalists that you know, walked us wow. through all over Fish Hall Beach. We broke up into three groups. I wish we could have been in all the groups because so much information was told. You know, I heard different information told by um, people in other groups that was amazing. But they took us around all over the beach, showed us, we got up close to crabs um, and other things, the oysters, the, uh, just so, so many different things uh, at the beach. Everybody was very surprised how much they learned because you know you think we're going to the beach yes I know about crabs and things but they had so many props you know from the beach mm -hmm. you know we didn't want to bother nature and there were some you know natural things there because Fish Hall is a different type of beach 
And so they loved learning about everything. And they learned a lot. Um, and from this, we have adopted a nest from um, the Coastal Discovery Museum. And we're number 182. That is our Ooh. nest number. And, you know, the monies from that is used for educational, you know, telling about people about the endangered, you know, turtle and things like that. So we're just really proud to be part of this. So you not only took away, you gave a little bit yeah. too then so to help thought, the natural environment. That's we th awesome. We thought it would be fun to. Now, there was a recent island packet and I think Coastal Discovery sent out some updates about what's going on there with the turtles, especially. Yes. Um, apparently you picked a top year because there's twice as many, they say? Well, a, a huge amount, and plus there's three different species. They Usually it's the loggerheads, and then the Kemp Ridleys had come, and then now uh, the green sea turtle has arrived. So there's three different types, so that's really exciting. How will our residents learn if they would like to try out this particular uh, initiative? They would need to contact the Coastal Discovery Museum. And you can go on their website. Dawn Brute is the educational person that you would need to talk to, and she is delightful. So Constance, thank you so much for coming to share this idea with us. And I guess we won't have to reinvent that wheel because you've already shown us the way to go with this. Thank Aww. you so much. You She's did a welcome. great thing. Oh, thanks. It was fun. Coming up on Sun City News, wine for you is now even more convenient. A South Carolina ERA bill could make national history. A Boys and Girls Club project is moving ahead thanks to Sun City residents. We'll be right back after these important messages. Wine guru Tina Thompson is excited about the latest in wine packaging, canned wines. Augustus Weed, a writer with Wine Spectator, recently noted that canned wines are no longer a fad. Perhaps the millennials have it right. As seasoned citizens, sometimes we are the last to try and test a new product. A little nudging might help. Canned wine is one of the fastest growing forms of alternative wine packaging on the market. Last year, canned wine sales jumped 69% to more than 69 million. Wine lovers can find an increasing array of brands from domestic and international producers. Wine Spectator offers 29 top scoring recent canned and box wine releases. These wines were reviewed blind in their Napa office. Here are three of each with notes and scores. In canned wine varieties, West Plus Wilder, White American NV, non-vintage, 88. Orange Blossom, Fennel and Lemongrass notes, three pack, 250 milliliter, $20. Canned Oregon, Pinot Gris, Oregon, NV, 86. Soft and a touch sweet with moderate pear flavors, $8, 375 milliliter. Jam, Chardonnay, California butter, NV, 85. Fruity and filled with red peach and apple tart flavors. Roasted almond accents shown in the finish. Four pack, 250 milliliter. $20. Now to boxes. Wine Cube Chardonnay California 2017. 86. Juicy with touches of richness to the pear tart and dried apple flavors. $18, 3 liters. Boda Box Rose Dry California 2017. 84. Simple with hints of peach and watermelon. Chenin Blanc Zinfandel and Petite Syrah, $23, 3 liters. Bandit, Sauvignon Blanc, California, NV, 84. Medium bodied with a whiff of fennel and dried hay notes, mingling with lemony flavors and sturdy acidity, $10, 1 liter. These easy to carry through the vines will complement any casual event. Thanks for watching. I'm Tina Thompson. Reporter Chris Chase updates us on the Jasper County Boys and Girls Club project in Ridgeland. Chris Protz, Executive Director of the Low Country Boys and Girls Club, and Sharon Quinter, President of the Low Country General Federated Women's Club, are here with details. Well, welcome Sharon Quinter and Chris Protz to Sun City TV. 
Now, Chris, what's the importance of the project that GFWC has undertaken for the Jasper County Boys and Girls Club? Uh, well, we're starting uh, something unique in Jasper County and Ridgeland specifically, and that is to create a teen center to, to serve the teens that uh, currently don't have a uh, location that they can call their own. So the project uh, is going to uh, focus on helping teens prepare for the workforce. It's helping them, uh, of course, academically to do what they need to graduate uh, from high school on time and be prepared to the next uh, step that they want to take. And so the support, the generous support in, of uh, this group in Sun City uh, is very exciting to us because uh, we, we're in a space that is not very conducive right now to attract the teens. And so the work and uh, the uh, fundraising that will be done will really provide some dollars and some uh, really manpower to change the look of the, the facility that we're in. So the relationship with Sun City and the group is very important to us and it's going to provide an opportunity to create a space that is going to be pleasant and creative and, and conducive for teens to want to come and participate. It sounds like it's something that's really needed as very well. Very much needed. Now Sharon, with your club's money fundraisers, they're aimed at this project. How will the July barbecue help in your efforts? Well, as Chris said, I mean, there's a lot to be done up there. Um, and it takes money to do that. Um, we've already got a little bit of seed money from the Sun City Synchronettes, and so they have generously donated to us. Now, Sharon, what's your timeline for this team area in Ridgeland? When is the work going to begin and when will it be completed? That's a good question. We um, are right now have done most of the planning for the first room and will start planning the second room very shortly. We really plan to get in there, get the old furniture out, you know, start cleaning it up, prep the walls for paint, get the flooring in, um, and then talk to the directors and the teens about what do you want in this space. We will have a proposed layout, of course, but we'll be able then to um, talk to them about that. Um, the timeline, I'm thinking by early October maybe, we should have it, um, September we'll have it in, you know, in place so people can see, the kids can come in and really kind of see what, what our ideas are. But then um, shortly after that, move them in and have them start using at least one room while we finish the second room. Well, it sounds like this barbecue is going to be wonderful. Sounds like a great deal. Dinner, music, yeah. benefiting a charity. What more could we ask for? That's right. We'll see you there. Thank you. So that's Thursday, July 25th at the Pavilion for barbecue, music, and helping the Jasper County Boys and Girls Club make a teen study and activity area. Call 843-707-4182 or email mstep1949 at hotmail.com for tickets and information. Do you know all the different ways you can get in touch with the Board of Directors? Sharing your feedback has never been easier. Your board hosts a chat session at 9.30 a.m. on the second Friday of each month in Pickney Hall. Come discuss Sun City issues with a board member. All residents are invited to the Board of Directors quarterly meetings. These meetings are a great way to find out what's happening in the community. Your board sends summaries after every working session. Look for these board updates in your email inbox if you are an eNews subscriber. Or you can email your board directly at board at schhbod.com. Still more to come on Sun City News. Sun City gets into the gin game for live summer entertainment. Ray Tapio is all about sports. We'll return after some messages from our sponsors. Entertainment reporter Randy Selman welcomes back the Summer Drama Series. The Summer Drama Series is back. The Sun City Community Theater, in cooperation with Lifestyle Services, is presenting the 1978 Pulitzer Prize winning play, The Gin Game. Director Susan Jones visited us in the studio. Welcome, Susan, and thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thank you, Randy, for having me. Can you give us a short synopsis of the gin game and why you chose to, to direct this iconic, dramatic, yet comedic um, play? Well, the gin game is about two individuals who find themselves in a rundown nursing home. The first character is Weller uh, Martin, sorry, Weller Martin, and he is played by Ralph Spiegel. Uh, we also have Fonzia Dorsey, and she is played by Carolyn Collins. Together, they discover each other playing gin out on the porch of the nursing home. What they unravel about their lives is both interesting and challenging. They are doing a fabulous job working on the show, and I really think people will enjoy seeing the development of these people. There are so many underlying facets um, to their emotions that slowly reveal themselves. How were you able to translate that to Carolyn and Ralph? Well, what's been fabulous is because it's such a small cast, I've been able to work directly with them. And what we did is, from the beginning, we said, let's look at each character and see how many layers there are. And we've been developing those layers together. They work wonderfully as a team, so it's really been fantastic to see how much it's developed. We also have a racial difference, so that's added some extra flair to the play that I'm really looking forward to showing the audience. Oh, I'm excited. Um, well, you've directed and performed in many productions. Um, how is directing a cast of two different? You know, what I really enjoy the most is that I can give so much dedicated time to two individuals. When you have a very large cast, it's very difficult. But when you have a smaller cast, you can really, really work and get down to the nitty gritty. And this show is really going to show that. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait to see the show. Thank you, Randy. The curtain goes up in Pickney Hall on Friday, August 2nd and runs through Monday, August 5th. Showtimes for evening performances are at 7 p.m. and the Sunday matinee is at 2 p.m. Tickets are $13 and they're available online or at Lifestyle Services. Don't miss it. I'm Randy Selman and this is your Entertainment Report. Remember, life is entertaining, so don't miss the show. What part of the U.S. Constitution guarantees equal rights for women? None of it. Bluffton Sun reporter Gwyneth Saunders delved into the problem after discovering that, essentially, the Constitution does not prohibit discrimination against women. An Equal Rights Amendment was first introduced to Congress in 1923 by activists Alice Paul and Crystal Eastman, but the bill never had a hearing until 1970. In 1972, the bill passed both houses and ratification was needed by only 38 states for it to become part of the Constitution. Although on the fast track, the legislation stalled with only 35 states approved by 1979. In seven states, only one chamber approved the ERA amendment. South Carolina was one of them. 45 years later, in March of 2017, the Nevada legislature ratified the amendment. In May of that same year, the Illinois General Assembly also ratified the amendment. That still left the amendment one vote shy of being eligible for reconsideration. South Carolina could be the deciding vote for the ERA amendment. Two bills were introduced in the South Carolina House in January of this year. They have been referred to the Judiciary Committee. Weston Newton, representative of District 120 in the State House, is on the Judiciary Committee and is a co-sponsor of Bill No. 3391, which states, a joint resolution to ratify a proposed amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America, providing that equality of rights under the law must not be denied or abridged on account of sex. Newton stated, even though the time frame expired in 1982, it's a powerful message and symbolic gesture that is not lost on me as a son, spouse, and father of two young women. In summary, I would say it's never too late to do the right thing. Nancy Williams, co-president of the League of Women Voters of Hilton Head Bluffton area, said the ERA is a pro-family bill that would have direct impact to protect the financial health of families. Additionally, it would help defend women against domestic violence, 
which claims the life of one woman every 12 days in South Carolina. William states, I think it is unacceptable that equal rights is not the law of the land. Barbara Fry, administrator of Equal Means ERA, said South Carolinians should contact their legislatures in support of the ERA amendment. Fry continues, because we're in the middle of a two-year legislative session, the bill will continue on the docket. There is a need to be in touch with elected representatives and let them know we want this bill passed. South Carolina is in a position to make that happen. Ray Tapio, sports reporter, finds sporting residents inside, outside, and all around the state. It may be a bit warm out there, but that does not slow down our couple's golf group. They will kick off their 18-hole tournament on July 21st at Argent Lakes Golf Course. This is an interesting tournament and is named Foursome Odd Even. Two net balls will be scored on the even holes, and three net will be scored on the odd holes. Ask your golfer friends to explain this to you, as I surely cannot. Or contact Jim Mikatz, Tournament Director, at 717-448-9300. Oh, hats off to Sun City's Merrill Meter, only 96, and he picked up a gold medal at the National Senior Bowling Games in the 95-99 to 99 division. Merrill has qualified for the state tournament for the past 12 years, and two years ago, he won a civil medal in the national competition. Just goes to show you what bowling for over 60 years can produce. Congratulations, Merle. Just more proof of what I always say. It's never too late to have a second childhood right here in Sun City. Ray Tapio for Sun City Sports. Thanks for watching our show this week. We invite you to check out Sun City TV's weekly program schedule in Sensations Magazine. And now check highlights and alerts on Twitter at Sun City TV HHI. Also, email us at suncitytvhh at gmail.com. Now to see extended coverage of your favorite news segment, tune into Extra. Check the current Sensations Magazines for Daily Times. And make sure you tune in next week to find out all the news that's happening in our community. In the meantime, I hope your week is full of only good news. For Sun City News, I'm Norma Taylor, and I'll see you next week.